Reeves is like my savior when it comes down to Batman. His film with Robert Pattinson is one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. So when I heard that he was getting involved with Bruce Tim to bring a brand new Batman the Animated Series to TV, well, I got absolutely excited. Then it got delayed and canceled because HBO didn't want it over on Cartoon Network and their streaming service, which I think is a completely dumb idea. But now it's coming to Prime. I got to check it out early and I got to say it's pretty good. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new TV review. Today, we're going to be discussing the season one of the Batman, the Caped Crusader. This, of course, will include no spoilers. This is a non-spoiler review because the series is not out yet. I got to check it out early, and overall, I liked it. Is it the end-all, be-all, one of the best Batman series of all time? No, but I think it could continually set up for that. And I think maybe my expectations were a little bit too high going into this. I don't think it really met what I was ex expecting, but... Overall, if you missed the feeling of the Batman the Animated Series, I think this show has its own tone to it, and honestly, its own world, but really much hones in some of those more mature themes that that series had, and as just a little bit of preference, Batman is my favorite DC hero. Uh, Batman the Animated Series was one of my favorite series growing up. Batman Beyond is one of my favorite shows of all time, and in general, I enjoy what Bruce Timm had brought to to, of course, Batman. And specifically when it comes down to that, hearing that Matt Reeves was going to be heavily involved with this, who again, I love the Robert Pattinson Batman film, that just excited me even more. Taking on another aspect and taking on a new version of Batman than we've seen before. And when some of the early first looks started coming out for this, I started going, okay, like I'm still excited, but I don't know exactly how to feel about this. Started to feel that way. I was very much just going, okay. Typically some of the character designs like Harley Quinn, I wasn't really feeling the look of that. But then the first trailer came out and I went, oh, the animation for this is actually pretty cool and it's very old school. And I dig that and I wanna see more of this. And now after seeing the first season, I can say it executed about what I expected from that first trailer, from that first look. And while, again, I'm not sold on completely all the changes to some of the characters, it is a very interesting take on Bruce Wayne and Batman. And specifically when it comes down to Bruce Wayne and Batman, there were elements in here and specifically some parts of his relationship with Pennyworth that I was not expecting to see. And I think it again shows a different light of Bruce Wayne. I also was really happy to see that they took the approach of this being an earlier Batman in his career where the city of Gotham still doesn't really know how to feel on him from the earlier episodes. And some people think of him as a menace. And I again like that. Like this is such a different aspect and people don't know if the Batman is a good thing for the city. And I also really like that the series isn't afraid to go realistic to some of the characters' approaches and designs, but also pull away and go very fantasy at the same avenue. There's a couple episodes, one at a, like, carnival, that, again, the villain of that episode, I, again, was not expecting that approach. I was expecting maybe a little bit more realistic, and I like that. And I actually hope Matt Reeves ends up doing that for his Batman trilogy, if we ever get it. I don't know if he actually will do more fantasy approaches, but... I like what they were trying to do there. So again, want to really shout out the animation here who, again, it kind of makes me feel like I'm watching an old school cartoon, not even back towards the Batman the Animated Series, but even older than that. Remember the Max and Dave Fleischer uh, cartoon shorts that they did with Superman? That's like the earlier avenue that I'm talking about within this in terms of the storytelling well, and just in terms of how the show looks. It doesn't look cheap. It looks nice in its flow of animation, specifically what it talks about its characters. And coming off a year where we also got X-Men 97, truly the best show of the year so far, part of me was hoping for some grander stakes in this show, but this is a first season. It's very much establishing this version of Batman, this version of Bruce Wayne, and this version of Gotham, with all the characters in the rogue gallery that you would expect. And it's a good setup first season. Every episode is very much the villain of the week. Some things tying into the next and some things setting up for later into the season that gets you excited and gets you wondering what is going to happen next. And I never felt like I was like, oh, okay, like that was kind of a disappointing episode. I was always entertained watching each one. Well, be honest, I was expecting something a little bit more and I don't know what that little more. I don't know if you guys have ever watched a series or a movie and like been like, I like that. That was good but I don't know, like there's something missing. 
And I don't know if that missing aspect is a little bit of a deeper storytelling or the same fact that it does feel like that this show was meant to premiere on television. I mean, genuinely, it was supposed to be on Cartoon Network and it didn't end up happening. The more and more I sit on this, this is one of those shows that does feel like a love letter to Saturday morning cartoons where you'd wake up early as a kid and you'd tune in for that brand new Batman show. I think having all the episodes all at once, which they'll be, again, released all at once, and being an adult is a little bit of a different nuance. And I think if I had a kid who was able to watch this and enjoy it and maybe, again, have those interactions of waking up early on a Saturday morning to watch this show, I think there might be a different avenue to that because I think I would feel like maybe I'm watching something a little bit more gritty than I actually should be. I mean, it does some stuff in here when it comes out of the action that I was like, whew! I'm down for that. I feel like that is the essence that's missing. And it's that magical feeling that I just feel like a lot of cartoons and animated series have not had. And X-Men 97 partially had that for me from the first few episodes. But again, it is more of a continuation off something that I did grow up with. So I was completely fine with it because everything had already been established. This is something that I can see growing into being something different. I don't have too many issues with the Batman the Cape Crusader. It's more of just it feels like something's missing. I feel like that thing missing is the fact that I just don't get to watch this on TV again on an early Saturday morning cartoon. But at the same point in time, I did think this was very enjoyable. I'm excited. I hope it gets a season two. I think it deserves a season two. I like what they set up with the characters. Some of the character designs and some of the choices that they make maybe aren't my favorite per se, but I still really like this. And I like this version of Batman and specifically Pennyworth and even Barbara Gordon and some others. I also will say some of the villains in here, like such as Catwoman and Two-Face, I thought the dynamics and the changes with those were great. Really hone in one thing. The voice acting in here is great. Uh, Hamish Linklater, who did a phenomenal job in Midnight Mass, is superb in here and brings that double entendre of Batman and Bruce Wayne to life through the voice. And it's very interesting, like, seeing, again, how simplistic the bat suit is in here. There's one shot of him driving as Bruce Wayne in his car and then hits a button and the bat suit's right there and him changing into it. And I really love that. And also diving into Bruce Wayne a little bit more, Bruce Wayne's a little bit of a fucked up little kid. Like, we all know that. Like, he fights as a Batman in the suit because his parents died. They dive into that psychosis of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Not super deep, but it's there. And I was sitting there always intrigued going back to that when Bruce Wayne is doing the things that he has to do. Specifically when it has to deal with kids. And that's the one thing I was very appreciative of in terms of its mature themes and maturing Bruce Wayne and Batman itself. So again, it does have really much that villain of the week syndrome, which isn't personally always my favorite. I was always interested to see which villain was going to show up next in the next episode and how Batman was going to be able to persuade it. I'm very nostalgic remembering all my times with Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond, which now makes me want to go back and watch those until we finally get a season two of this series. So with all that said, I'm going to give the Cape Crusader a B. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy. <laughs>